Happy Friday, Flosstube. Hello, crafty friends. How's everybody doing today? It is Friday, November 27th. My name is Caroline. Welcome back. Daily crafty chat. So I, I have, I'm running a little bit behind today. It is already almost 2.30 in the afternoon and it's a Friday. So I am looking forward to um, stitching this evening. I stitch most evenings, but Friday nights, I generally, whenever I possibly can, try to um, get in a six hour stretch of st stitching um, and sort of have a little virtual party with the Friday Off The Grid Facebook group. And it's not, I mean, virtual party is a, is a, is a loose term for putting on some comfy clothes, picking a project, and having everything taken care of so that you can sit and relax and enjoy your stitching for six hours, if you can manage it. If you can only manage an hour, then you're still, you know, welcome to, to join us. Um, try to post pictures of your starting point, a picture at your ending point, if you remember. If not, you don't have to post pictures at all. You can just enjoy everybody else's stitching. Um, and, you know, leave a comment, leave a heart, anything that you like. So. It is Friday and I'm really hoping to get in a good stretch of time because I've been working really hard on Savan. Uh, I'll show you my timer. So this is Savan is my large project that I am doing a 24 hour rotation on. So I start my timer countdown uh, and then I, I get to move on to something else. So, so far, like I have mentioned in the past, I haven't been all that consistent with using the 24 hour method with my projects, but when I do, I'm finding that it's actually really encouraging to me how much you can, you can visualize how much progress you're actually getting done. So here's my timer. We're at 13 hours and five minutes remaining in my 24 hour stretch. And so that means I put in about two hours last night approximately. And so here's where I got to. So you can see it's really, really starting to fill in at the bottom there, working my way towards the center. Now, obviously, once I get over here, this, this fill in will take me a little longer because of course I haven't done any of this over here. Whereas I was starting with lots of the motifs already um, sorted and I've just been able to just enjoy a lot of fill in work here. So last night, like I had said, I was going to focus on the fill in, uh, in here and what else did I do? Oh, I started this little guy here. Um, it was mostly a lot of, uh, blue fill in and black in amongst the motifs that are in there. So very satisfying progress. So you may have noticed uh, that I have a bit of a different background today. Um, I, I can't really tell you too much information today, um, but I have been kind of working on something uh, with someone else. <laughs> And um, I, I can't tell you all the details. I, I can't tell you many of the details. Actually, I can't tell you any of the details yet because I'm just not quite ready to. However, I had to start um, preparing to be ready to tell you about the details. And so part of that includes um, the background that you see behind me today. So I promise I will have more information at a later date. And until then, you can, you can wonder. You can wonder and be curious about uh, what I might have to show you in the days to come. So, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of liking it. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, um, I don't know. I think it's, it's, it's growing to be a little more, um, reflective of how I want it to look. And, and my, my room, you know, you may remember I, um, before we went, before we moved off the grid for the summer, I moved my sewing space upstairs and I took over my son's old bedroom and because 
before that point, my sewing space was half of our living room downstairs. And so Sarah and Nicholas traded rooms. It's a whole long story. But anyways, his old bedroom was just basically a catch-all room and it was full of so much stuff. And so uh, I sort of, t I took over this room and of course brought up all of my stuff here and moved for the summer and then over the course of the summer, while I was up there, there was a lot more stuff left downstairs packed up in boxes that John and Sarah moved up here for me um, when I wasn't here over the summer. And they started to kind of use the space as a, <laughs> as a catch-all. Um, so this room kind of became filled up again with a whole lot of stuff. And then when I moved home and I had to work with the Christmas kit, uh, I didn't have a lot of time to sort through a lot of stuff and reorganize. So a lot of the extra stuff got moved into my bedroom. And remember I told you I still hadn't really unpacked from the cottage because I was so busy with work that a lot of things just kind of... <gasps> John just appeared with a treat for me. So I, he said he figured it was worth interrupting me having my chat with you to bring me a coffee. So I would agree. That was awfully nice. Their Christmas cups. Um, I'm, I like their Christmas cups this year. I think I've had two other ones. Um, the two other times that I've, I've managed to go to Starbucks since the cups came out. And I think that there's one that isn't particularly very holiday like. It's just red and green. But these ones, these ones are really pretty like that so that was a nice treat <sighs> okay one more thing that I need to share with you today before I say goodbye for the weekend I had mentioned that I had made a couple of purchases uh, in and that had arrived now I think I actually had mentioned this purchase before I just it hadn't arrived yet so think back to the summer and I was very pleased to announce the traditional stitches 20th anniversary celebration stitch along that was the uh, very special hands across the sea chart of Ann Morrison that hands across the sea uh, put out for traditional stitches celebration for their anniversary and uh, Janice at traditional stitches had contacted me and she had asked whether I would like a copy of the chart and also would I like a, a copy of the chart to offer as a giveaway and um, we had one very happy winner out in Eastern Canada who won the chart and will also um, be participating in a stitch along so that was really fun and uh, when I saw the chart I just fell in love with this sampler. I mentioned earlier this week that I'm noticing that some of my tastes are starting to, I wouldn't say necessarily that they're changing entirely because most of the things that I'm working on or have in my stash or in my whip pile, I am still very much uh, smitten with. But it's almost like the sampler world is opening up to me as well and kind of drawing me in. And I've always, I've always admired samplers. I've always thought that samplers were beautiful, but the call to stitch them has, has never been quite as strong as what I'm starting to feel. Now, there have been a couple that I couldn't resist. Um, there's a Scarlet House one that I did actually start last year. And I really need to, I really need to get that back out again. But sort of the traditional schoolgirl samplers, um, up until very recently, haven't really um, called my name enough. And I'm thinking that, that that is possibly, perhaps, the fault of Brenda and the Sampler Stitcher, and perhaps Needleworker Ellen, because when I think of what everything that I want to stitch, I want my walls to look like Ellen's walls. Again, I mentioned her a couple of days ago. Ellen is the designer uh, with my needle, with my needle.com. You can see all of her designs there. And she, she is on Instagram at needleworker Ellen. Her 
feed is so inspiring. I just, I, I really admire everything that she stitches. Um, I like that she shares a little bit of, of her life um, during uh, isolation with her husband and just, uh, I am absolutely in love with her sampler walls. She makes me want to be a sampler stitcher. And then I watch Brenda and, and Laura and, and I want to be a sampler stitcher. <laughs> so Anne Morrison, I was giving away the chart and I knew that Janice was going to send me a chart. So then I started poking around on the website and looking at the supplies that were going to be um, with the coming with the chart. And before I knew what happened, I had put all of the supplies into the shopping cart and pushed the button and have been waiting very patiently for it to arrive in my mailbox. And I am so happy that I did. So here is the chart. This is Ann Morrison. And it is so beautiful. So beautiful. And then Krista just stitching along designed, you know, I, I then had the sampler chart, Miss Margaret and Rollo for the Christmas kit. So in the summertime, all I kept thinking about was stitching these two samplers. So, um, I have been admiring Krista's chart every time I would put it in someone's package <laughs> to send out in the mail. And, oh, that was, I, I do, I, I'm going in a circle again. Get put your seat belts on. Um, I must have had five or six people email me and say, um, "Oh, the bags are beautiful. I just love my set, but I don't. Wasn't it supposed to come with a chart, and I didn't get a chart? That I should have said something because it was clearly not just one person who didn't who had trouble with this. I had tucked in a cardboard." Um, protector envelope for the chart and I think a lot of people thought that it was um, it was just an extra sleeve put in there to protect the bags um, because it's a soft mailer that I send the bags in but I didn't want Krista's chart to be uh, crushed um, because it was a it was a bigger chart than the couple other times that I've sent charts in with the package Sometimes with the smaller charts I can tuck them in between the notions pouch and the bag and that protects them but but miss Margaret Ann Rollo was She was a bigger girl and she needed some she needed to be put into a mailer in the bag and some people didn't see that and fortunately emailed me before the recycling went out because the cardboard sleeve had actually gone into the recycling and it wasn't just one person it was it was a few so my apologies for not making it absolutely clear when i was talking about you know how in the past that that would be how they would come um so we could have maybe avoided the the confusion but fortunately uh everybody got their charts so i do still have some charts left just as an addition while I'm thinking about it. Um, so yes, I have been admiring these charts for months. So I have Anne Morrison and Miss Margaret Ann Rollo, and I'm starting them both in the month of December. So December 1st is when I'm going to start uh, Miss Margaret Ann Rollo. Here she is, Miss Margaret Ann Rollo. So, you know, honest to goodness. Look at these. So it's not sampler September for me, it's sampler December. And December 1st, I am starting my Miss Margaret and Rollo and there are a few small ornament charts on the back. And then December 5th, is when the stitch along for Ann Morrison starts. There is a Facebook group. What's the name of the Facebook group? It has a bit of a longer name. Traditional Stitches Sampler Stitch Along Ann Morrison. Ann Morrison Traditional Stitches Sal. Something like that. I will try to remember to leave a link down below. 
it's already got over a thousand members in it. Um, there are so many of you who are going to be stitching this along with me. And actually that reminds me, uh, just while I'm thinking about it, Miss Margaret Ann Rollo, I have about 45 copies left and that will be it. Um, I don't think Krista will be doing another print run of this chart and I have all of the ones that are left. So if you would like to stitch this along with me and also with Rose Heck, this is funny because Rose is going to join me in starting um, Miss Margaret on December 1st, but also Rose is the one leading the Ann Morrison stitch along um, that starts on December 5th. So Rose, you and I are going to get to hang out a whole lot in our, we're going to be stitchy twins in the month of December, but Rose is such a quick, beautiful stitcher. She's going to be done years ahead of me. But I can't wait. So exciting. Okay. So along with Ann Morrison, I purchased the silk the 103 silk and the 45 count Jersey cream linen. So it's, I'm, I'm leaving it in the package until I, I start on the fifth. So it's just a lovely linen and it's very fine. Um, I have worked on 46 count once before. So I'm excited to try this 45 count. And the silks, sorry, crinkly, crinkly. I'm leaving them in the bag. Now, I saw that someone on the Facebook group for this stitch along purchased a plastic lipstick holder. So it was a, it was like a, a box that had 12 slots in it and they were sort of tiered, slightly tiered, and you would normally put lipstick in them, but she had her silks in them. And I thought, that's genius. So I think I might try to, I might try to see if I can find one. And then um, I think that's an excellent way to store them as well, because they are a little bit roly, roly poly. So in order to keep them safe next to your stitching spot. So the 103 Overa Soie, is a slightly thicker floss silk and um, I was showing this to Ellen the other day and not needleworker Ellen but Ellen 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 maximum cross stitch power Ellen and so I had pulled this one open because it's my favorite color look at that color <gasps> and you can see that is the single strand of thread so it's, it's a plump, beautiful thread. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. So that starts on December the 5th. And I'm pretty excited about that. And uh, I did, um, I've talked about timber yarns before. Excuse me. Let me get my reach here. Talked about timber yarns. And I mentioned that I purchased their Christmas. Um, they had a, uh, was it a, what was it called? 12 Days of Christmas? I can't remember, hang on a second. I've got the card right here. That would be helpful, wouldn't it? I can hear all my, my coffee cups clinking over there. <laughs> 12 Days of Christmas. Okay, so this was the card that came. Now. This was supposed to be a secret until December the 1st. We weren't supposed to show our yarn or projects until December the 1st, but then on Instagram, Heather changed her mind and she said, let's share it. So it's not a secret anymore. So this is the, this was the uh, inspiration photo, I think that Heather used to design the yarn. And as usual, Heather's mom, Pat, wrote the thank you card on the back at her beautiful handwriting just beautiful and here's the yarn look at that so I've mentioned many times uh, timber yarns is Heather is renowned for her self striping sock yarn 
so all of those colors there are going to be a stripe in the sock and if you follow Shiloh uh, X stitch MD if you follow her on Instagram she might have shown these I haven't watched her latest video she might have shown these already she purchased um, the same thing and she's well on her way with her in fact has she finished her first sock already she might have actually finished it I it, but it reminds her and me of Smarties when when it's all knit up you see Smarties and look there are Smarties on the gingerbread house and that's what my mother-in-law used to put on her gingerbread house too were Smarties and so it's really it's just so sweet so there are two 50 gram skeins one per sock and then she included two oh there's oh look at the progress keeper there's the progress keeper it's a little gingerbread man it's adorable that's so cute and then it came with two uh, 20 gram minis this one's called cake boss and this one is called Big Red. <laughs> I love that. So, that's the sock set. And I don't know when I'm going to knit them. But I couldn't resist. So, it was a little Christmas treat to myself. Early. And that's it. That's. Those were my purchases um, and I just, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to bits and I, I'm so excited that I get to start Ann Morrison and Miss Margaret Ann Rollo very, very shortly. It's gonna be great. Okay, that is it for me today. I have a beautiful coffee here to enjoy and get back to work. And Josh's quilt, because I am behind today, I have attached one of the four strips and I've got all of my sash, my sashing, I cut all of sashing and I've attached one more strip. So my quilt top is now half completed. And so later today I am going to add, now that the sashing is cut and it's ready to go, it's easy peasy. I don't pin, I use, um, I mean I would, I would pin if it was, sometimes I'll pin if, if it's necessary. But the way that this quilt is, it's, it's easy to nest and because the sashing is, big I can use my clips and so these were I think I just got these off Amazon I know that Clover brand makes clips as well but these clips instead of using pins I just use these little clips they are the handiest things ever um, now these ones were not very expensive and in fact you can tell because a couple of the a couple of the clips in the in the bin are uh, a bit defective however when i'm making bags and i'm making um so for example i have one fabric next week that i've got 12 bags of one size so i will make I will do all 12 steps of the bag at the same time. So when I'm putting the zipper in, I'm putting 12 zippers in. So I can use, you know, all of these and have them all stacked up and then sew them all at once. So these things really, really come in handy. I love them. It was my sister-in-law, Kathy, who, who got me onto these. And uh, she's a clever girl, so there you go. Okay, I think I really am done now. Yep, I'm done. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. And uh, I hope you're well, and I hope you're safe, and I hope you're going to have some happy crafting time for yourself at some point tonight and this weekend. And uh, I'll see you on Monday again. It is. It has been really nice to be back this week. And uh, thank you. Thanks for being back with me. So take care, everybody. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you on Monday. Happy stitching. <laughs>